So it's extremely important not to overdiagnose and not to underdiagnose. Due to this reason, when a child comes with polyarthritis, right, don't give aspirin immediately if you are not sure is it migratory or not. Right, because parents are very worried. Their child has severe joint pain. You can manage this pain with codeine or some other drugs. But as soon as you come to know this is migratory in nature or child is brought and history is telling that five days back child was having ankle joint inflammation and pain and now he's having knee joint then already migratory pattern is clear you can immediately give high dose aspirins of course you will admit the patient you will give the strict bed rest and you will give high dose aspirins is that clear now there's a bad news and there's a good news about this arthritis bad news is that that pain is very severe and not only child suffers but parents also suffer right and the good news is that rather very good news is that even though there's very very severe joint pain there is no long-term complications when fever is over joints are perfectly as normal as possible right so we can say but opposite to that if baby develop rheumatic carditis doctors should get worried if baby has polyarthritis, right, these are the parents who are worried because that causes severe pain. But doctors should get worried when rheumatic process involves the heart because if a rheumatic process is involving heart, I will explain later, that will lead to very long term serious complications in the heart and valves. That is why some good clinicians said, some good clinicians said that rheumatic fever licks the joints and eats the heart. Rheumatic fever licks the joint and eats the heart, right? So anyway, let's sum it up that in a patient with rheumatic fever, polyarthritis may be there, multiple joints will be involved in the migratory nature and severely painful and best response is seen with aspirin or salicylates, right? The very good news which you have to remember is in spite of very severe inflammatory condition of multiple joints, once patient will come out of the rheumatic fever, joints will be as normal as possible. No long term complications are seen in the joints. Is that right? Now we come to the skin. Right? We have talked about the central nervous system problem. There may be rheumatic chorea. There can be polyarthritis. Now let's talk about the skin. There what really happens to the skin. Actually, some of the skin antigens are also very similar with the bacterial antigens. So immune system, which is supposed to cross, supposed to attack the bacteria, may also react with the skin. Right. In the skin, it will produce special type of layers. What are the layers? The layers usually formed are small macules, small macules which rapidly grow up right and then when these macules rapidly grow up their centers heal or they develop like a crescent and their margins are inflamed so because the centers heal again these lions form in such a way that first uh, inflamed red area develop then this area start rapidly developing larger and then central area is healed and inflammation is moving on the margin and inflammation is moving on the margin of the lion Due to this reason, this type of lions are called erythema marginatum. Erythema marginatum. Marginatum. What is erythema marginatum? Erythema means red color. Erythema means red color. The lions with red color, especially on the margins, they are advancing. So erythema marginatum is one of the clinical features of the rheumatic fever in which skin develops erythematous macules which rapidly enlarge uh, while their central area start healing. These are usually painless. These are usually painless and they are more commonly seen in central part of the body. They are less on the peripheral part of the body, more on the trunk, right? And less on the hands and feet. Erythema marginatum. Thank God, this complication is also not that bad because if rheumatic fever a patient with rheumatic fever has developed erythema marginatum, it will again heal completely and no long term complications are seen. Then we can come to the fourth uh, next tissue that is subcutaneous tissue. What really happens that fat or fascia under the skin 
subcutaneous tissue, sometimes I mean a logical mediated attack is to the connective tissue in the subcutaneous area and that will lead to inflammatory lesions here and eventually formation of subcutaneous nodules. The subcutaneous nodules are specially formed on the extensor surfaces, extensor surfaces on the limbs and especially uh, under the bony prominency and usually these subcutaneous nodules which are of the pea size 1 to 2 centimeter or half to 2 centimeter and these non these are not usually tender so non tender half to 1 centimeter nodule in the subcutaneous area usually on the extensor surfaces on the limb are attached with the synovial sheaths of the tendons of the muscles or with the some bursa right or with some tendon right again they don't produce any long term complication let's review what we have covered we have talked about chorea central nervous system problem is that right chorea is involuntary purposeless movement of the limbs and when the when patient heals from chorea there is no long term complication patient develops polyarthritis polyarthritis may be extremely painful but again long term complication is not there skin problem erythema marginatum and subcutaneous nodules both of them are painless right and usually there is no long term complication right now what is left to be discussed is cardiac problems we are going to talk about cardiac problem and this is something which is very very important to understand clearly that what happens to the patient's heart now we will be talking about rheumatic fever and the heart now during the acute phase of rheumatic fever immune system also cross react with the cardiac tissue now let's see what really happens in the cardiac tissue let's suppose here is your right heart and here is your left heart now this is your myocardium okay let me draw only left heart to explain the situation this is your myocardium i will draw only the left heart to explain the situation that is an easier way to learn right let's suppose this is the left atrium this is the left ventricle and this left atrium and left ventricle and here is your yes which valve mitral valve here is your aortic valve now the interior of the heart internal side of the heart is lined by a special type of material which is called endo cardium that is called endo cardium now this blue lining is the endocardium which is lining the heart from within and outside the heart this green area is representing pericardium this is presenting pericardium is that right so what we have learned up to now that there is myocardium and outside the myocardium the green one is yes pericardium and within the myocardium internally it is lined by endocardium right if rheumatic process involves pericardium and there's pericardial inflammation we call it rheumatic pericarditis rheumatic pericarditis if rheumatic process involves involves the myocardium right then we call this condition as rheumatic myocarditis we call it rheumatic myocarditis 